This right here is my baby. This is, well, now it's called the Mayflower. It's spelled M-A-E flower. And it's called the Mayflower because I thought about it as like, okay, this is kind of like the first of its kind, the first to do its thing, um, like the Mayflower boat. Actually, my late stepsister, name was Ameze Osamremida. We called her May May. She was actually born with sickle cell anemia. And so whenever she would have crises, we called her Mei Mei, I would call her Miss Amazing, when she would come out of them. And, and when she passed away in 2009 in a uh, horrific car accident, I thought to myself, from that moment forward, I was going to vow to create anything that I was passionate about in her memory. That was a big part of this, this journey. Okay, just to keep you on sh in shape and on top of things, she went to build that uh, uh, wooden slate. And here it is. She named the wooden slate Mayflower. And since then, Mayflower has been, uh, has gone through so many renovation and updates and upgrade and, <laughs> and everything. So I went to the hardware store, I bought all this wood. I literally just walked through the store and I was like, okay, this looks like it could be useful. I sat in my garage for like 72 hours, did some trial and error had some frustrations, but then ended up with this baby. And this has helped us tremendously. This has been the single most important training tool for our Bobsled 101. Basically, I decided that I wanted to create a Bobsled team um, in 2016 after being in, a, in the bobsled world for a year. Three years ago when she came and said, I wanted to do bobsled. I said, what is bobsled? She said, ma, you don't know bobsled? I said, I don't know what is bobsled. So she described it to me. I said, she, you're out of your mind. You want to do roller coaster on ice? I recruited them, AKA stole them. What they say is I tricked them. No, I'm just kidding. Do y'all say I tricked y'all? No, we just no, say No, I just stole. say you stole us. Yeah, you stole us. <laughs> so our goal for this one is going to be to make sure that we just stay right on this line. So we gonna, you get to keep us straight. But remember, we got to hit at the same speed. Time. I'm going to go. I'm hitting so you can hit. Green! White! You know what, I feel like going down ice gets a little bit scarier each time, which is weird because like you would think that you'd get used to it, but I mean, the more you get competitive, the faster you know the sled is gonna go. If the brakeman doesn't hit very well, the driver might not have that good of a first steer or, you know, moving forward, it might be a little bit more, you know, iffy. When we're in the sled, they can't hear anything I'm saying other than my screams um, and vice versa. We can't really communicate because going that fast, all you hear is ice mainly, especially with them with their head being down. Your performance matters to everybody else, you know, it's like people are relying on you to get your job done. This is the first time that any group of female, black females, will qualify for this event, which is alien to Nigerians, to, to Africa. People sometimes look at things on the surface, but they don't realize that one, you know, we come from a country where in, in the history of both of our tribes, they didn't always necessarily see eye to eye. And this is something revolutionary, something historic. Being Nigerian is not the same as what it was 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, and you know, same with being American, like those things have changed. And so I think it's pretty cool to see like the evolution of, you know, where we were and then what we are. <laughs>